The plan is to take the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope from my home here in the Algarve, southern Portugal, to test it in the center of Madrid, Spain, under Bortal 9 level. Here at my observatory in Algarve, my light pollution level is 5, a very decent level for all types of telescope observations. On the Bortal scale of light pollution, which ranges from 1 to 9, level 9 in the city of Madrid is the maximum on the scale, making the use of telescopes a major problem, especially if the observation is visual. But in this case, Dwarf 2 only uses a camera, which allows us to see something more in the sky, even under strong light pollution. So it's a good test to do, as acquiring the experience of using a smart telescope under extreme light pollution will help me to recommend you this smart telescope even better. But we have to stay in the city center. We have to go to the center of Madrid regularly since my wife had cancer in 2019, which fortunately was resolved in Spain, but we have to go there for exams and control tests. And me and our two young children, we also always go with her. It is very important that the closest family accompanies the patient throughout the long recovery process. So let's rent an apartment right in the center of Madrid for the four of us. But to be able to test the dwarf, as with any telescope, it's best to have a good field of view and... That's why I'm choosing a top floor apartment with a terrace. So in addition to having a very beautiful view of the city, we are also able to test dwarf too. But just a few days before we leave to Madrid, with everything already prepared, the clinic contacts us to postpone medical appointments and exams. So now I have to change the train tickets because we go by car to Seville in Spain and then we go by fast train to Madrid. And now we also obviously are trying to change the dates of our stay in the apartment. The problem is that everything is already rented on that new date and there's nothing available that suit our needs and budget. I need to call the apartment owner. He's offering us another one in the same building, but it doesn't have a terrace. It only has a small balcony. What a disappointment. We are running against the clock, so it's better not to complicate things. So I will accept this apartment and give up on taking Dwarf 2 on this trip without knowing what I was going to discover. It was a huge disappointment, but we can certainly do this experiment next time. I'll tell you about it in the next video. Time to go. Let's just move on to Spain. And we're finally in Madrid, so many people. It's colder here and it smells like Christmas with all those colorful lights and people in a rush everywhere. Let's rest because we are all tired. But in the morning was when the strangest thing happened. I'm just finishing my breakfast. Let's go to the balcony to see what is there while drinking my hot and fragrant coffee. The view is a little lacking in beauty. The balcony leans over a kind of precipice on a sinister slope with vegetation and fallen trees in a mixture of the smell of nature and urban pollution. But anyway, at least you can see something. Buildings surrounded by trees are at least more beautiful than a simple wall. We have to resign to that for now. But looking closer, I see what seems to me like an institutional building on the right side. It looks like a dome on the left side, hidden between some trees like me, affected by the winter cold and urban pollution. Yes, it's a dome, not one, two. Something is going on there and it must have to do with astronomy. This hot espresso tastes better now, looking at the domes in amazement, trying to guess what they are. But I have to find out what it really is. Let's check on Google Maps. Okay, the building on the right is a public library. Thus it confirms my initial suspicions. And the building on the left has the reference Royal Observatory of Madrid. Interesting. Let me zoom on it. William Herschel's telescope. Incredible. What can it be? Is there a real telescope inside? Can we visit it? Excitement is starting to take over me. I have to know more about this. I just can't ignore my curiosity. And so I looked for information and found a dramatic but beautiful story peppered with some mysterious secrets. The acquisition of a Herschel telescope to be installed in Madrid was part of the project to install an astronomical observatory in Madrid. The initiative began in the year 1790. 
a powerful telescope should serve as the instrumental base for the new astronomical observatory. A letter to the King of Spain stated that the largest telescope would be 25 feet long, with a mirror 24 inches in diameter. Although at the time positional astronomy predominated as a priority theme in the work of astronomers, others wanted to delve deeper into the cosmos and reach its final structure. Among them, William Herschel stood out with his unusual tenacity, capacity for work and dedication. Leaving aside the instruments used to determine the positions of the stars, he concentrated his efforts on building telescopes, a path he took in 1773 with a telescope measuring one and a half meters high. Herschel, therefore, had great experience when he undertook his work for the Spanish Observatory and given that no one surpassed Herschel back then in his dual activity as observer and builder of telescopes, everything seemed to indicate that with 25 feet, Spanish astronomy would have the world's first telescope in optical quality and the second in size. It seemed like it, but did they succeed? In 1798, Herschel observed the planet Uranus, the same one he had discovered a few years earlier, commenting that he had never seen it in such perfect definition. In 1802, a boat left London with 52 crates in which the entire structure of the large telescope was packed, as well as instructions for assembling and using the instrument when it arrived at its destination. These documents would be vital to what was about to happen. During the trip, the boat and its crew managed to survive the pirates. But then, a few leaks from Bilbao, Spain, a tragic accident occurred. The observatory's chief instrumentalist was thrown by the mule he was riding, receiving such a strong blow that he lost his life shortly afterwards. This sad event delayed the process considerably, but finally, in 1804, it was possible to observe it through the perfectly assembled telescope. But just four years later, an even greater tragedy for astronomy occurred. The telescope was destroyed by Napoleon Bonaparte's troops during the French occupation of 1808, destroying part of the observatory. It is said that the noble wood of the telescope was used to keep soldiers warm from the cold. However, the two mirrors were cleverly hidden in a tower of the main building and they also hid the clock, which even today continues to tick regularly as a sign of the constant and uninterrupted flow of time. Fortunately, the magnificent drawings and instructions have also been preserved. Someone risked their life under military occupation and did something good for astronomy, but there is no record of who it was. But recently, the Spanish reconstructed this wonderful instrument full of history. And in addition to this treasure in the form of mirrors, clocks and documents, the Royal Observatory, now a UNESCO heritage site, preserves the replica of the large 25-foot telescope that surprises all visitors who see it. Hey, stop! Visitors? This is music to my ears. We can visit William Herschel's huge telescope and it's right here in front of me. Let me check the website. No, visits are closed. We were lucky to discover this treasure, but now unlucky with the date. So we can't open the treasure now. But now let's try to plan calmly during next summer. When we return to Madrid, maybe take the Dwarf 2 to test in Madrid and also visit the wonderful treasure full of history and importance. An astronomical journey into the past to share with you all soon.